Welcome to Frank's Diana Explains and to the formal language part of the Discrete Mathematics course at the University of Cambridge. With the two sides of Kleiner's theorem under our belt, it's time to tidy up some loose ends. I was pretty minimalistic in my definition of the syntax for regular expression, but we are going to show that that definition is nonetheless sufficient to derive the moral equivalent of AND, OR, and NOT over regular expressions. In other words, given regular expressions R and S, we don't need to define any more primitives in order to construct a regular expression that accepts all the strings accepted by both R and S, or another regular expression that accepts all the strings accepted by at least one of R and S, or another regular expression that accepts all the strings not accepted by R. In yet other words, we are now going to prove that regular languages are closed under intersection, union, and complementation. That is to say, if you intersect two regular languages, which by definition are sets of strings that can be recognized by finite automata, the set, you, a set of strings you get is another regular language, and so on for union and uh, complementation. And please click the like button if you like all this. The next thing we want to look at is this question uh, on our famous sheet of questions. In formulating the definition of regular expressions, have we missed out some practically useful notions of pattern? And in a previous lecture, we anticipated that uh, there are a variety of things that you find in uh, Unix tools that use regular expressions that simplify your life, such as uh, writing A, Z instead of A or B or C or D, and so on. But this is only syntactic sugar. But is there any more substantial thing that we might want to um, consider, such as um, the regular additional operators that would allow us to express the regular expression that is the complement of an existing regular expression? Well. In order to decide whether this is even possible, we must first figure out whether regular languages are closed under the operation of complementation. Because if they're not, then there would not be a regular expression. But fortunately, they are. So if L is a regular language uh, over alphabet sigma, then its complement would be what? Its complement would be the language made of all the strings in sigma star that are not in language L. So this complement, uh, we now prove, is also a regular language. And we do that by saying, because L is regular, there exists, by definition, a DFA M that recognizes L. Now let's build a DFA called not M by taking M and exchanging every accepting state into a non-accepting state and every non-accepting state into an accepting state. This is the definition of not M. Then uh, the language of the strings that were not accepted by the first uh, automaton is exactly that of those that are accepted by the second automaton and vice versa. And because it is accepted by some automaton, then it is regular. Now. Uh, this is a bit subtle because it works because I have specified a DFA. But what would happen if I had been talking about an NFA? For example, when we were building the first half of Kleine's theorem, I said, OK, what's the machine that recognizes a single symbol, such as A? Uh, and I drew a picture like this. I have my starting state. If I get an A, I go into an accepting state. And that's it. Now, if my alphabet is for the sake of argument A, B, C, uh, then this clearly is not a DFA, because it doesn't say what happens in the case of A, B, C. What would a, a um, so I have two questions. One is, what would happen if I tried to do the not M of this M. Not M would look like this under the explanation I've given. 
uh, but would it recognize the strings that this one does not recognize? Um, well, what do you think? Puzzle looks. Okay, let's park this for a moment. Uh, what would a DFA look like that uh, recognized only the symbol A? It's fine to start like this, but it is not a DFA until you tell me what happens if I get the symbol B in here? What should happen if I get B? I must go somewhere, yes? Goes to another state. Let's go to another state. B. And if I get C, I also go to that other state. Uh, and what happens if I get an A in here? Anybody else have a clue? Uh, I should, if I get another A here, then there would be the string AA. A. And if this is the machine that's supposed to recognize just A, then this cannot be good. So I cannot go to the accepting state. I must go to this other state. And similarly, if I get B, or if I get C, and in here, if I keep getting any other junk, uh, I would uh, still go here. So now that is a respectable DFA because it tells me what to do for every possible symbol. And on that one, I can do the uh, not construction to obtain something uh, that um, would look like this. A B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. And so this one is one that accepts every other string made of A's, B's, and C's, exc excluding the single string A, and including the empty string because the starting state is accepted. OK, so um, why were we doing all this? Uh, we were doing this because, ah, because our point was to say, um, can we build a regular expression that represents the family of strings not recognized by another regular expression? So if I have a regular expression r, then I can build a regular expression tilde r which is, which matches every string in sigma star that is not matched by R. Uh, U is in sigma star such that U does not belong in the language recognized by R. And uh, the fact that it is possible to build such a regular expression follows from all the theorems we've uh, proved so far. So uh, you have the regular expression you build yourself an equivalent uh, NFA epsilon using the first half of Kleiner's theorem, and then using the thing we did in the lecture before that, uh, you transform that into a finite state machine, uh, a DFA M uh, deterministic uh, finite automaton M. And uh, at that point, you can do the not construction on it. And then once you have this not DFA, you can uh, use the rest of the theorem that we did this morning, uh, this afternoon, uh, to produce uh, a regular expression. And that regular expression, which will not be something that you find out by inspection by looking at R, but is something that you have all the tools to build step by step, uh, will be something that recognizes uh, exactly all the strings not recognized by the original one. 
This is a slide that tells you how to make a not M. It just keeps uh, everything in the same and you exchange uh, the accepting and non-accepting states. Now, uh, having done the um, complementation, we can use it using basically set operations to also uh, prove that regular languages are also closed under, under intersection. So if you, have, um, if you have two languages, the language of the strings that belong to both of these languages simultaneously is also a regular language. And uh, it means if you have machines recognizing languages L1 and L2, there exists a machine that recognizes the language uh, of the strings both in L1 and L2 uh, because if you this is L1 and this is L2 and the rectangle is sigma star all the possible strings then the universe minus L1 is uh, this. Why is it not right? Uh, because This is too small. OK. This is the universe minus L1. And this is the universe minus L2, I hope. Um, it's not closed, so it doesn't want to fill it in. And then now I have. So the union of these things the union of these things is this and the complement of this is the intersection of the two sets so um, L1 intersection L2 is the complement of this thing, which is a set theory version of the Morgans. Uh, and so, because languages were closed under complementation, and they are closed under union because uh, that was part of the definition of regular expressions, then uh, they are also closed under intersection. And so you can have a long-winded uh, construction that will give you the intersection of two languages. And uh, if you want, you can also build a DFA that is the intersection out of two DFAs with a construction that would be instructive for you to uh, try and figure out, where you make a combined DFA whose states are pairs of states, where the first state is in the first one and the second state is in the second one, and the, the transition function is defined in what, if you've been following, uh, would be the obvious way. But requires a bit of ingenuity to write down. It, it's very useful to do this exercise. Uh, and if you do that, you don't have to go through all this rigmarole. You just build yourself a machine directly. And um, so because they are closed, then you can always generate a um, regular expression. You can invent a new regular expression operator that expresses the end of two regular expressions. Uh, and uh, you can construct, using the part of the theorem we did, this, the, we did today, uh, given the intersection machine, you can build yourself the intersection regular expression. 